Now, when you're talking about authentication, there's not exactly a, a set checklist. Much like Dahlberg, there's just factors that courts tend to consider when they're trying to authenticate this kind of computerized evidence. Um, one of the factors it was the autopsy based on complete data. Did you have everything you need to proceed with the virtual autopsies? Um, how much manipulation was required? How complex was the formula used to create this evidence? What's the routineness of doing a virtual autopsy? What is, what is the procedure, the standard operating procedure? How are people trained in the technique? Factors such as this. And then one final factor that courts do tend to look at is can you duplicate the output? Can you duplicate the autopsy results? Um, if you did this autopsy three times, would you end up with the same result? So these are things that courts will keep in mind when they're trying to authenticate that you perform the virtual autopsy process in a reliable manner. And there's two more issues that I want to talk about in terms of legal challenges and virtual autopsies. And one is just keep in the back of your mind how is the evidence going to be used in court. Now, if you're using a virtopsy to completely replace a traditional autopsy, again, something that hasn't happened in the United States but, but could, arguably, well, then you're probably going to use those virtopsy images as substantive evidence. And it's going to be a lot harder to get that into court. That's going to face more scrutiny. However, if you are just using these 3D images because they're great graphics and they support your existing autopsy report, if you're using Virtopsy as a supplement, well, then you're looking more at demonstrative evidence, illustrative evidence. And in that case, courts are going to be a lot less likely to put really heavy scrutiny on authenticating the process or perhaps having a Fry or Daubert hearing. Now, one other thing that I want to mention is there's the chance that you may try and enter this information into a case where the court accepts it as if it were just an x-ray or any other photography or photo. In that case, luck is on your side because x-rays and autopsy photos have been admitted into court for decades with, with little to no scrutiny at this point. So with those thoughts in mind, I'm now going to turn to recent developments in the field of forensic autopsy. And just to sum up, we have talked about what is a virtual autopsy, what are the pros, the cons, and some of the legal issues. So now let's go ahead and move on to those recent developments and what's happening in the field now. So what exactly has been happening with Vertopsy in the past couple of years? What are some of the new and cool recent developments within virtual autopsies? Well, one is the creation, the development of a demonstration table. And this is essentially a table with a smooth surface on the top that users can go up to. It's interactive. They can touch the table and actually manipulate the 3D images, much like a medical examiner performing a vertopsy would on his computer screen. Um, and what's interesting to note is that when they developed this table, they actually they didn't create a, a fictional corpse or something like that. They actually based the images on two real cases. So users can go up to this interactive screen, look over, and with the touch of a hand, just sliding your fingers across the screen, you can remove the skin off the body that is being autopsied. You can rotate the skull. You can zoom in and out. And so they developed this to show people the ease and the advantage of the vertopsy. And in addition to creating this demonstration table to go out there and get the word out and show people the benefits of virtual autopsies, another development that happened actually came out of the National Academies of Science. And the National Academy of Sciences released a report titled Strengthening Forensic Science in the United States, A Path Forward. And what the NAS did in this report is they actually mention virtual autopsies and how it can be seen as a new technology on the horizon to help medical examiners and coroners. In other words, we're starting to see greater recognition of virtual autopsies and what they can contribute the medical examiner slash coroner system. This report was released in 2009, so again, it's another example of a very recent development of what exactly is happening with vertopsy, what is the status of vertopsy. Now, in addition to these recent developments, and as the technology progresses, you may be interested in learning more about virtual autopsies and tracking what, what's going to happen next in the field of virtual autopsy. So now I'm going to talk about some research resources that you can use if you're interested in this subject. 
So, in review, what we've done is I've gone over what are virtual autopsies, I've talked about the pros, the cons, some of the legal issues, what's been happening in the field of vertopsy recently, and now I'm going to provide you with some research resources if you're interested in learning more about virtual autopsies. And hopefully I've gotten you a little bit excited about the subject and you do want to track what's been going on in the field of vertopsy. Now the first place I would recommend that you look, www.vertopsy.com. That's V-I-R-T-O-P-S-Y dot com. What is this website? This website is the, the home page for the group that developed the technique of applying digital imaging to autopsies. Again, this group is based at the University of Bern in Switzerland, and their website has a ton of useful information. It lists publications, press releases, training opportunities. It even has a link to movies of virtual autopsies. So again, this is probably one of the best starting points for finding out more information on virtual autopsies. And speaking of training, they do offer a three-day training course on how to perform a virtual autopsy. They've been doing about five or six years now. And that's something that you can find more information about on their website. Additionally, a book was published by CRC Press in 2009 about vertopsy. In fact, it's the first book on vertopsy. It is titled The Vertopsy Approach, 3D Optical and Radiological Scanning and Reconstruction in Forensic Medicine. It's been getting wonderful reviews and what's so great about the book is there have been dozens of scientific articles put out about vertopsies and case examples and whatnot but this book combines all of that into one collection sort of a one-stop place for information on vertopsy where can you find the book for purchase you could google it or go on amazon.com however if you're interested in perhaps just borrowing the book i would suggest that you come to the national clearinghouses collection at Stetson University College of Law and try and obtain the book through loan or interlibrary loan. It is a text that we keep in our forensic hard copy collection that would be available for use by you for research. In addition to coming to the clearinghouse for a copy of the book, I would also suggest that you visit our website www.ncstl.org and search the site for information about virtual autopsies because it is a forensic technique that we have been tracking for a few years now. Particularly if you're on our website, I would visit our search database option and, and look through our database for records and articles and, and news stories about virtual autopsies. We catalog those. Additionally, you can visit the education and training section of our website and in there, there is an extensive PowerPoint presentation from, I believe, 2004 or 2005 about virtual autopsies, their status, and some more information on the legal issues related to virtual autopsies. So with all that in mind, I hope you've enjoyed today's discussion. I've enjoyed talking to you. Thank you so much.